Welcome to the SVG TV News for Friday, November 10th. I am Khalil Cato with the details. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, who returned to the state on Wednesday following visits to Ghana and Nigeria, will pay a one-day visit tomorrow to Venezuela. The Prime Minister outlined his travel plans for the upcoming weeks at a news conference today where he reported on his recent visit to West Africa. On Tuesday, CARICOM leaders are scheduled to leave the Caribbean for a few days to go to Saudi Arabia for the first CARICOM Saudi Arabia summit. As you know, several of us have been building these relations. And you know, we have signed already 16 million US dollar agreement in respect of um, a 2% interest. You took the, 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 the agreement to Parliament, 20 years, 2%, the fixed rate of interest, which is quite low. To do some health facilities, the centerpiece of that would be a modern clinic, a modern health center, sorry, in um, South Rivers. But that was just the first, where we have sent in um, other projects. And I'm hoping to sign in relation to those projects when I go to Saudi Arabia. These will touch on concern um, school infrastructure, some other health infrastructure, housing is a big portion of that, and uh, some other governmental infrastructure. I'm trying to make an arrangement when I'm in Saudi Arabia to leave there and go nearby in Qatar for a day or two since I'm in the neighborhood because I made application from the Qatari fund for certain resources, including, very importantly, to build a science, technology, and innovation lab as part of the enhancement of the work at the community college and, of course, at the global campus at the University of the West Indies. We have the land there marked already. Going up the French is here, just behind the University of the West Indies. On the reason for his travels and the importance of foreign policy to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, PM Gonzalez said the engagement of the country's leadership touching and concerning foreign relations is of great importance, which he said some people are blind to because of partisan politics. At its most elemental level, the foreign policy of a country, and certainly in the case of a small island developing state like St. Vincent and the Grenadines, is to enhance our capacity, our nation's capacity, to address more, most efficaciously the challenges in the external environment, which are many, within the interests of the humanization of our people. And that humanization connects to outcomes which relate to the improvement of our lives, our living and production. So St. Vincent and Grenadines, some tend to forget. We are 150 square miles of land, and we are about approximately 11,000 square miles of nautical miles of seascape. Now, those factors which we point out, plus our history of colonialism and our struggle for independence, our history of native genocide and the enslavement of African bodies and indentureship, and the way we have built our society as a creolized whole, despite dissonances, all of these factors that I've mentioned would tell you that a country of this size and its location and its history has to engage with the rest of the world. The world, the, 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 the planet Earth, has 8 billion people. What happens in the rest of the Caribbean and the world, in Latin America, North America and the world? They affect us. You can't stay in St. Vincent and the Grenadines in splendid isolation. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to develop the links, the connections, the arrangements through international bodies, through bilateral relations, through regional entities like CARICOM and CELAC and the like. So foreign policy for a country of like St. Vincent and the Grenadines 
is of great significance. Noting that there are visits of varying levels of importance, Prime Minister Gonzales said some may not bring immediate material benefits, but the links are built for these material benefits. In this particular case, I left here on the 29th, Saturday evening of the 29th of October, and I returned on the 8th of um, November. In London, I, I had discussions on two sets of investments, one in relation to St. Vincent mainland and another one in relation to the Grenadines. I also had a discussion with the Mr. Dennis O'Brien of Digicel regarding his campaign, you know, his he started what is called a repair campaign, reparations, and he's using his influence, his corporate influence, to push in, in Britain and in Europe the case for reparations. And, and some of his team have come down here and met with various members of the government and, and um, people in the reparations movement broadly defined, and, and also the opposition. So I got an update as to the work and, and, and further things you'd like to engage with us on. In Nigeria, I was there at the invitation of the former president of Nigeria, who is an iconic figure in Africa, former president Olusegun Abasanjo, known as Baba Abasanjo because of the reverence in which he has been, he's been held in Africa and elsewhere, an elder statesman. And it was important to have conversations with him on many issues concerning Africa and Africa and the Caribbean, including, of course, the work of Africa Exim Bank, which he has been associated, and you know, he visited here with the president of Africa Exim Bank, which is important not just for the government, but particularly for the private sector. And Africa Exim Bank, when I was there in Nigeria, was having a an, an exposition, a business exposition in Guyana. This is how these things are, are connected and, 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 and linked. PM Gonzales noted that as the minister responsible for post-secondary and higher education, he had discussions with the vice-chancellor of Bell's University of Technology in Nigeria, and they have agreed that they will do exchanges with the SVG Community College. He said they are also looking at exchanges between universities in Ghana and the SVG Community College. The Prime Minister said he also discussed with the Ghanaian leader the bilateral agreements between SVG and Ghana, reparations and air and sea connectivity. Today, members of the local media were given the opportunity to learn more about the regional integration through growth, harmonization and technology right program at the Beachcombers Hotel. The right program is an 11 million euro program funded by the European Union under the 11th European Development Fund, EDF. Head of the OECS Regional Integration Unit, Kevin Hope, said the program's focus is aligned with the revised Treaty of Basseterre to advance regional integration in the Eastern Caribbean in multiple areas. Right is implemented by the OECS Commission in conjunction with member states, ministries, departments and agencies, including regional and international partners such as the European Union. And right, as I said, is anchored in our regional integration mandate. Of importance, there are two results area on the right that we are developing and implementing projects under. These two results area are, are stated as one, deepening the integration movement by implementation of the OECS Economic Union, enhancing ICT infrastructure and systems and enhancing our collaboration with multilateral institutions. The second results area is resilience and competitiveness enhanced through sustainable community development. And of importance, this area really looks at building capabilities, enabling an environment for sustainable economic development, and equally ensuring that the private sector participates and contributes to this process. Hope said as some of the initiatives under the right program include improving tourism in the Eastern Caribbean. But in the OECS, 
We recognize that there are some niche areas in tourism that we can fund and support and collaborate across member states, largely in the area of community-based tourism, in addition to improving our historic tourism industry, our historic and heritage tourism industry. How do we retain some of the authenticity and integrity of the historic tourism opportunities we have in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and by extension, the Eastern Caribbean? Similarly, another initiative that was funded on the right, and for which St. Vincent also held one of the workshops, was our OECS Blue Bio Trade Project. And of importance, I think this is, and this is why I preface with the large ocean state colleagues, of importance, one of the initiatives that came out of, of this funding on the right were technical studies that sought to value the Queen Conk industry, the value chain of the Queen Conk industry. And Queen Conk accounts for approximately 15% of the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism in terms of production. So St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia and Grenada accounts for approximately 15% of that production, of which the export of Queen Count is a delicacy and in high demand in Europe, in the European Union, in the United States of America and Canada. And as such, there is no coincidence that we saw within the last seven years or so the investment by, rain, by rainforest seafood in the Calico area which also is to facilitate the HACCP certification and processing of a number of our fisheries products for exports to a wider market. Hope said the Regional Integration Unit is responsible for implementing eight components of the Right program. It's important to note we are at the halfway mark, more or less, for Right, and we have approximately two more years of implementation, and we see this engagement with member states or increase engagement with member states to actually accelerate a number of these components. So I would invite my colleagues shortly to speak about the OECS contingent right policy which falls under our remit. We also are working assiduously with respect to digital public infrastructure, with the strengthening of border management systems, with respect to strengthening of consumer protection and competitiveness environment, with respect to OECS migration and diaspora engagement, and also enhancing business regulatory reform in the Eastern Caribbean. Tomorrow, government will open the South River's Temporary Health Center. Construction on this project began in March of this year and wrapped up in October. The work was done by Bradza and subcontracted to local contractor Marcus James. Excuse me, the construction cost of the project is $460,000, and the cost to retrofit the, was $50,000. The land for the project was contributed by the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. A release from the office of the Prime Minister said the temporary health centre was built to provide a temporary facility to house the operations of the health centre for two years while a modern health facility is being built in South Rivers. Saturday's ceremony will feature addresses from health officials and Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, who said he will leave the South Rivers event to go to the airport to go to Venezuela. The annual Salvation Army Christmas Kettle Appeal officially began today. Declaring the official opening of the appeal, the feature speaker Laura Anthony Brown said that the Salvation Army in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and worldwide are carrying out the work that God expects Christians to do. This involves showing mercy and kindness and forgiveness to others, reflecting God's own merciful nature. I believe that the work of the Salvation Army worldwide and the more than 120 years, I think I got that right, of the existence of the Salvation Army here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines epitomizes kindness and compassion and love for those who are less fortunate. So I would say that the Salvation Army is carrying out the work that God expects us as Christians. And all of us know that we do have a need, a deficit of resources for some. Outlining some of the work of the Salvation Army in SVG, 
Anthony Brown said that the non-profit organization has been very successful and effective in carrying out its mission. And some of the work we have heard from the, that the Salvation Army is involved in, the home for the girls, where there are approximately 14 girls living and being taken, being cared for, that is a tremendous work. We have heard about the school feeding program. We have heard about the soup kitchen. You have heard about the, distant, the, the distribution of, of food packages of last year, over 600 people. And all of these are really vital, important, and great work. And I congratulate the Salvation Army for its involvement in this type of work. So we can say with certainty that the launch of this year's Kettle Appeal, which seeks to support the work, is more than a mere tradition. Yes, I am sure that each year you look forward to the launch, but I am here to suggest to you that it is more than a mere suggestion. For those who depend on this lifeline, and for some, it is indeed a lifeline. We know that it is, for some, their main hope for the Christmas season. The annual Kettle Appeal is one of the main platforms through which the Salvation Army raises funds to support its programs, including a daily soup kitchen and distribution of Christmas food packages for the less fortunate. The Vinlec National Science and Technology Fair 2023 ramped up earlier today with a prize-giving ceremony five, after five days of showcase at the Methodist Church Hall by students of primary and secondary schools across St. Vincent and the Grenadines. At the showcase, a grade 5 student of the Lower Bay Primary School in Beckway showcased CMOS Aquaculture, which highlights how CMOS benefits ocean life and can help with food security. The coral is bleaching due to high temperature, sea urchins are dying due to pollution, and there is no seafood. On this side of my project, the CMOS farm is creating a home for this marine life. When the CMOS absorbs sunlight, it creates oxygen and nutrients for the ocean life. Food security, there is lots of so seafood on this side, this so there is... We, we have lots of seafood, that means most food security. The CMOS helps to break down waves so it do not cause degradation. A student of the Beckway Seventh-day Adventist Primary School had on display a reading nook which seeks to encourage reading. She also used her creativity to, desi to design pencil pouches for students. And then you get like a old pillowcase. And if it don't been get ripped up, you just sew it right back and put in sponge. The same thing I did with this other one. They're very fluffy. And books that you could read or draw is inside the back. Now let's go on to the pencil pouches. This first I get conco pack and I collect them from the school at break time. And then I and then I cut it open and we and I stick it onto sticky onto sticky paper. And then I carried it from my grandma to sew. Which she was having a little bit of trouble of sewing it, so she used a like a cloth to put on the zip, and that's what all of these hair did. All of these hair, and these hair are the book markers, and that's all I have to show of 
read and know. A student of the Rose Hall Government School who took part in the life science, earth and space and physical science categories of the fair had on showcase a water cycle and a solar system. The solar system is a group of planets or bodies that revolve around a star. That star was formed when a dust and gas was disturbed by a star called a supernova. And it, the supernova had a big bang, and then after the big bang, the effects were waves. The waves squeezed the dust this and gas together, and everything ran out. And then they got sucked back, sucked back in by gravity. And then there was a beautiful solar nebula in the making. It was getting hotter and denser, and the edges were cool. And then it, by the time it got bigger and hotter, and then there were particles like meteorites, stones and stuff. Water is in the rivers and the oceans and ponds and puddles. It, it, the sun, the heat from the sun makes the water turn into vapor or gas and then the tiny water droplets stick together with other particles in the air and then that will form to cut that process is called condensation and then when the clouds are full when the clouds get swell and they can't hold and they can't hold anymore they burst and that leads to precipitation. A former inmate of His Majesty's prisons, Cecil Young, is sharing his story of being incarcerated and living with the HIV, AIDS, HIV virus and is urging youngsters to stay away from prison and protect themselves against HIV, AIDS and other STDs. Sharing his story on the Cop Chat program on WFM Today, Young said he tested positive for the virus while working on a cruise ship. On his run-ins with the law, Young said sometimes he was at the wrong place at the wrong time and was blamed for crimes that he did not commit. But because of his reputation, he spent countless periods in and out of prison. HIV program, as you're listening, and what I was speaking about, I understand. HIV, eventually, I get HIV by the seal in Cuba. So I said, well, I was 20, 25 years. Asked, uh, as we are former inmates in prison. And I say, when I was go presenting, Chief Badri got to speak to me and tell me he is not a good place to be around. Uh, so, and, and keep out. Well, I just try my best to keep out from prison or I come up after Well, right now it's four years now and a couple of months now since I go back to prison. December, the, um, next month, I think it's 20, no, in 19, we make me four years since I'm going there. And the RSA, say, thank God, for me to say, you guys will enlighten me when I come back to the prison. When I come on the HIV program, I like to inform them youngsters to keep away from them, from HIV conviction. Now, right now, we're the magistrate and in jail with a conviction. Yes. But why do go to prison? Why do you go to prison? Why do you go to prison? First to the behalf, I go sit. Thanks for calling Phillips a bet. Yes. Because I was in Belize. Yes. 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 Yes.